Well, it's Friday. It's very windy outside today. So we're back in greenhouse today and we're going to plant some cabbages, but we're going to put them in containers. And I'll tell you what size you need as a minimum to grow a cabbage. So let's get started with that, shall we? So what I'm going to be planting in is one of these. This is an homemade planter. It was just knocked together from a free pallet and it's really sturdy and we've spaced out the bottom ones to allow for good drainage because that is really important in any container so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put two cabbages in here I mean this is the equivalent to 15 gallons and the minimum to grow just a small cabbage is five gallons so anything less than that you're probably going to struggle not everybody has got containers like this but you can use other containers such as one of these lots of holes in the bottom it's a plastic cheap plastic container and it's easy to move so you could try one in this as a bare minimum for one cabbage plant in fact I'm going to be doing this today but I'm not going to just plant cabbage in here I'm going to add a couple of other things quicker harvesting crops so I can make the best use out of this space but I think I'm going to plant a cabbage in here as well and then we'll see how that goes through the season so the first thing we need to do obviously is get some compost in this and if you sieve your compost like I do then maybe you've got a couple of containers of really rough lumpy stuff left over which is what I use to fill a quarter of these containers to save on good compost so if you have been doing that, put that in the bottom because that will also help with drainage. So we're going to go in with some of that rough stuff as I mentioned earlier. Whenever I plant anything in a container, I always fill to about halfway and then I'll add some nutrients. This is fish blood and bone. and then we'll top it back up with good compost. And when you do this, make sure you leave an inch or two around the top, just so it gets watered correctly. And I'm just gonna firm it down a little. Back to the cabbage plants that we're using. These are called Durham, and they're an early cabbage, and it basically grows to a point and it is a very reliable variety of cabbage as well as is uh, another early one which is called Greyhound as I said I'm only going to put two cabbages in this container and then we're going to add something else just so we're not wasting this area for the duration it's going to take for these cabbages to grow because cabbages have quite an aggressive root system so we're going to plant in here something else that has shallow root systems so we'll pick a couple of good sized ones out of here. Now if I bring it in to show you, you can see that it's not a huge cabbage plant, but it has already got quite a root system going on. And what we're going to do is plant one just slightly away from the edge. We'll make an hole because we need to bury cabbage plants deep. Where you see a cabbage plant, that's the first set of leaves there. And these are the true sets but you want to bury it right down to there it'll make it a more stable plant as it grows so we're just going to push that in and then we're going to firm around it like that so your plant at that is very stable and again lots of roots on this one so we're basically just going to do the same the other side of this container so a nice deep hole and we'll drop it in right to that V and then firm it down and that's your two cabbage plants in there and as I say it they don't look much to start with but we know they're gonna grow really big so we have to be careful about allowing them the space that they need to grow so what I'm going to be doing rather than just having two cabbages growing in this big container I'm going to put some more vegetables in there that will crop quicker. Also bear in mind that when you do plant cabbages in containers 
you're not going to be getting huge cabbages. You're going to be getting round about that size cabbage, which is plenty of cabbage for two to three people when you harvest it. And if a container garden is your only option, something is always better than nothing. So what I'm going to add to this are some peas along the back. Now these are not regular peas, these are petit pois, which are your tiny little peas, really tender and sweet. But the beauty of these plants, which are called waveriks, is they only grow to two feet in length. So all we need to do is create a structure at the back to support these peas while they're growing. Also peas don't use up as much nutrients as other vegetables would when they're interplanted with cabbage. So peas is a good one to plant with your cabbages. So what we'll do is we'll make a support for these peas out of some canes. So what we'll do is that we'll go in right across this backside, push it right down to the bottom like that. And then we'll check that we've got two feet in height from the soil. We've actually got way more than we need. So you can either leave it at this size or you can cut it down a little if you prefer to have a smaller frame. And then we're going to need probably three of these. So I've just popped these in and these are at a height of two feet now all the way. So I'm going to put a top support across this as well. I'm going to attach this top support with a couple of tie wraps. If you don't have tie wraps, you can use string. The wind's a bit crazy out there today. And since these peas are only light, small plants, that's going to be perfectly fine to, just to support them while you're waiting for your cabbages to grow. And then we're gonna use string to tie across here because as these peas grow, they're gonna put out little tendrils that will want to grab hold of something so then it can go up a little bit further and then a little bit further until it reaches its maximum length, which is the two feet, which we've just constructed. So we'll start right at the bottom of this cane. And we'll tie some string on there. And then we'll wind it around the centre one. And just raise it up a little bit as well. Then we'll just cut this string and tie it off. So you've got your first line of string attached now. It's all really stable. So as I said, when you put these peas in, they're going to want something to grab hold of and then they will grow a little bit more, put out another tendril and then they'll want to grab hold of something else. So what you'll need to do, as the plants grow, add another piece of string. You don't need to do this straight away, you can just wait until the plant starts growing and then do it. So now you've got a perfectly stable finished pea frame for your petit pois to grow up. And there's nothing else that you'll have to do with this. This will be perfectly fine to last the entire season. So now we can get the peas put in. So I'm just gonna take out a few of the bigger ones. And all we need to do with these is just make an hole in front of that string, pop them in, and then firm them down. You can put these virtually side by side if you wanted because they're only going to grow up. Although you may have seen these before, if you look on there, you can see the tendrils. That's what the pea uses to grab hold of the string and then it will grow a bit more and send out some more and on and on. And because we still have a little space left here, while nothing's happening, we can also add a few of us multi-sown beetroots because if we want to, we can just grow these into baby beets or we could just harvest them as salad leaves. So the salad leaves will be ready before the peas and the peas will be ready 
before the cabbage. So you've got kind of a continuation of food growing in a really small area. So let's put a couple of these in as well. So we'll just tease out one of these plugs. And then we'll put it in here nice and deep. And then fill around it as well, just to give it a little bit of extra stability. So in, right down, and firm around. So then you're going to be left with this. So all that's left to do now is water in your new container plants. And give them a good watering to start them off as well. And then you can also top dress it with some extra fertiliser if you want to do that. I'm using a bit of bone meal for this one. So all we need to do now is go and pop it in that container garden. So let's get that done. So there we go, all set up in the container garden. Now we just have to leave it. And another nice addition to our container garden. There you go, that's another addition to that container garden. And it's basically a two foot space that has got three different varieties of vegetables growing in it. All that will harvest at different times. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this. I hope you liked that video. And if you want to see more in the future as we advance in this container garden, because we're really going to try and cram as much produce in there as possible, then just hit that subscribe button and press the notifications bell. And we'll see you on the next one.